What's up Chiefs Kingdom, Noah Gray here, tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Joss's channel and check out showmefootball.com for more. What is up Chiefs Kingdom, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com and I wanted to make one more video before the legal tampering period opens up tomorrow and the start of NFL free agency begins. I wrote about this on arrowheadaddict.com, but I wanted to make a video talking about it. For, again, for those of you that maybe you don't read my stuff or you're just not big readers, you'd, you'd much rather just listen to or watch a video. Hey, I totally get that. I'm a lot of the same way. That's why I have a YouTube channel. So there's an approach that I think the Kansas City Chiefs could take in free agency that I've been thinking about that might be a little unpopular. A lot of people might not be considering it, but... It's something that if it happened, I would really like it, and I almost kind of want to see it happen. So let's talk about it. So the Kansas City Chiefs decided not to use the franchise tag on left tackle Orlando Brown. And when they did that, it was kind of a little bit of a surprise. Um, most people thought they would tag Orlando Brown because, you know, if you tag him, you can still work out a long-term deal. Now there are benefits to not tagging him, such as, it allows you to do more in free agency because you're not paying him the tag. Um, and also, it means that you're not potentially stuck paying him a bunch of money that he maybe doesn't quite deserve that you never wanted to give to him because there was still the possibility that they don't work out a long-term deal with Orlando Brown and whatever. You know, like there's benefits to not tagging him. But not tagging him means that it's a very real possibility that he leaves Kansas City. Like he's going to be hitting the open market and other teams can offer him money and I think there are going to be some desperate teams out there that are going to offer him more than the Chiefs can and the more important fact here is that the Kansas City Chiefs are comfortable with that happening the Chiefs have to have some sort of ulterior plan if they're not going to tag Orlando Brown or they have to have some sort of contingency plan in the scenario that they aren't able to hold on to Orlando Brown and then you got to consider the fact that Andrew Wiley, their starting right tackle from this past season, also hitting the open market. So it's a very real possibility that the Kansas City Chiefs lose both of their starting tackles off last year's Super Bowl team. And it's not like Orlando Brown or Andrew Wiley were elite tackles, but the big concern is who are you going to replace them with? You know, are you going to draft two rookies in the NFL draft and have two rookies starting at both tackle spots? That seems like a huge risk. You also have a lot of other holes to fill. So, you know, that's that's a big ask. Uh, are you, It's not like you can sign any other left tackles to replace Orlando Brown. The left tackle market is absolutely putrid. Orlando Brown is the best free agent left tackle, and if you're not going to bring him back, well, then who are you going to get? And then there's right tackle, and that's why I wanted to make this video. Right tackle. Jawan Taylor of the Jacksonville Jaguars, is a free agent this offseason. He's going to be a free agent when the legal tampering period opens up. He's only 25 years old. He's a Pro Bowl level right tackle, um, one of the best pass protectors in the league. Very young and a lot of upside. So why do I bring him up? Well, like I said, if you let Andrew Wiley go and Orlando Brown, you're going to be heading into the draft needing a right tackle and a left tackle. But... The Chiefs could save themselves a lot of pressure and make a smart move and try to go after Jawan Taylor in free agency because Jawan Taylor is probably the best right tackle on the market. And if you could sign either a left tackle or a right tackle, yeah, fans would probably rather get a left tackle because that's a more important position, but there's no really great left tackles on the market. You have a great right tackle currently on the market that you could possibly sign, and then when you go into the draft, all you would have to worry about is left tackle. And Juwan Taylor would really solidify the right side of your line. And it would allow you to maybe even potentially trade up in the draft for a left tackle. And so you would have a young offensive line core of a rookie on the left side, Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, and then Juwan Taylor. We know the Chiefs are going to have some money to spend this free agency. Uh, they have roughly $40 million in cap or so right now. Um, they're like top 12 in the league in cap space as things currently stand. This is without a Chris Jones extension. This is what, or without restructuring Mahomes, and they still have some money to spend. They could absolutely afford Juwan, or Juwan Howard. 
Um, Jawan Howard, uh, according to SpotTrack.com, is projected to make around $14 million per year. That's very affordable. That's a good deal for a young right tackle with Pro Bowl potential. And again, his strength is pass blocking. And this is a Chiefs offensive line that at the tackle spot gave up a lot of pressure last year. Probably more than the Chiefs are comfortable with. And they don't want to do that again. So they could fill the right tackle spot, but also be massively upgrading from Andrew Wiley. And all props to Andrew Wiley, who was solid for the Chiefs, was asked to play a role that he really never should have been in. And the Chiefs won a Super Bowl with him at right tackle. But they could upgrade from Andrew Wiley by bringing in Jawan Taylor. Now, the concern is, you know, the Chiefs would be spending a lot of money on a right tackle. You've got some other guys on this offensive line that are probably going to cost more in the coming years. Joe Tooney's contract is going to kick in eventually. Um, Creed Humphrey's going to want to get paid. Trey Smith is going to want to get paid. you got to remember, those guys are about to enter their third year in the NFL already. Crazy how fast time goes by. But those guys are going to want extensions. But the Chiefs could do this. They could pull this off, paying Juwan Taylor if they're willing to get very inexpensive at left tackle by bringing in a rookie. Now, they could trade up in the draft in the first round, move up into the late teens, and grab, like, Anton Harrison from Oklahoma or something like that. And you feel really good about your offensive line, and you don't need a right tackle because you signed one in free agency in Juwan Taylor. And once again, yeah, fans may want the better left tackle than right tackle. Left tackle is the more premium position. It's harder to find. It's more important. That's Patrick Mahomes' blind side, but... The Chiefs, for several years, had a much better right tackle than left tackle and had one of the best offenses in the league back when they had Mitchell Schwartz at right tackle and Eric Fisher at left tackle. Eric Fisher was good enough that the Chiefs could get by. Eric Fisher was never going to overwhelm the opponent. He was never going to be the reason that you won games, but you could win games with Eric Fisher at left tackle. And if the Chiefs can at least find that in the draft and then have Jawan Taylor as their right tackle, they'd be just fine. And... Jawan Taylor is also a veteran tackle with a lot of good size. You know, he has plenty of experience in the league at this point. He's like 6'5", 315 pounds. He's got 35-inch arms. He could maybe even help out at left tackle as your rookie is coming along and your rookie is transitioning into left tackle, and then he can go back to right or whatever. But Jawan Taylor just gives you a lot of options that you wouldn't have if you decide to go into the draft letting Andrew Wiley and Orlando Brown go. And Juwan Taylor would be a big free agent signing that you could make that would still allow you to make a flurry of other moves for some other role players and filling some needs before you get into the draft. And so, like, this idea of bringing in Juwan Taylor at right tackle is really intriguing to me. It's really growing on me, and that's why I wanted to make a video about it. And I really want to hear from you guys what you think about potentially bringing in Juwan Taylor and focusing on right tackle in free agency as opposed to left tackle in the whole Orlando Brown situation. So it might not be a popular route, ultimately, to sign Juwan Taylor and spend some money at right tackle instead of putting in a bunch of effort to keep Orlando Brown, but you wouldn't just be plugging up a hole by getting Juwan Taylor, but again, you'd be making a massive upgrade at right tackle, and you wouldn't have so much pressure on you heading into the 2023 NFL draft. And so this is a move that I would really like to see, and also Juwan Taylor is still relatively young, so like he fits that Chiefs timeline. So I, I would really like this idea. I don't know if this is what the Chiefs are going to do. Honestly, if I had to bet on it, I would say they don't. But this idea is growing on me. So I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of the Kansas City Chiefs potentially bringing in Juwan Taylor? This is the free agent signing that I really want to see. And look, protecting Patrick Mahomes comes first. Um, and this signing wouldn't keep them from doing some other things that they would like to do. So that's my opinion. But again, want to hear from you guys, your thoughts, if you agree, disagree with me. With all that being said, make sure you like, share, share, and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this. And make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com. And I will see you all in the next one. And I will see you all on the other side of free agency. Go Chiefs!